once again, the photographers are left the church, just me here. But uh, I'm glad to welcome you to our evening prayer service for this uh, third Sunday in Lent. Uh, if you have a prayer book, uh, we're beginning on page 18. And the Bible readings and the reflection tonight will be the conclusion of this six-part series, pilgrim series on the Bible. And I, I hope you have been finding it helpful. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most cheaply so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. And almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm for this evening's service is Psalm 145, verses 1 to 8. 
and it's found on page 516. I will magnify thee, my God and King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy mighty deeds. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thy abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering, and of great kindness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the reading, the first reading, is taken from the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning to read at the 24th verse. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And on page 21, we say together the words of the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And again, as we've been doing for this program, uh, the second lesson is a few readings that they recommend we we reflect upon this coming week. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Psalm 71, verse 6. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalm 19, 7 to 9. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. 
Psalm 84.10 Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. For I am, that is 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 to 39. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And on page 22, we say together the words of Anunc Dimittis. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And, O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Enlighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I will read from the Pilgrim Course, 
And today, the last session about the Bible is entitled Daily Bread. In this session, we are thinking a little more about making Bible reading a part of our regular life and prayer. The story of the temptation of Jesus is told in Matthew's Gospel and in Luke. Jesus responds to the temptation to command stones to become bread with these words from Deuteronomy. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of God, the scriptures, are like bread. As bread gives us physical nourishment, so God's word gives us food for the spirit to sustain us in our discipleship and on our journey. Put that thought together with the line of the Lord's Prayer that says, Give us this day our daily bread. And then ask yourself the question, How often should we read and reflect on the Scriptures? For most Christians, coming to God's living Word, Jesus, through God's written Word, the Bible, is a regularly daily discipline. We live in a time and place when we have access to a printed Bible in our own homes and where most, but not all, adults can read. In earlier generations, people would have had to rely on learning passages of Scripture by heart and reflecting on them each day. But the pattern from earliest times has been for disciples to have a pattern or rule of life that includes daily prayer. At the center of the prayer is thoughtful reflection on the scriptures, listening to God. Good habits take time to build up. You will need to experiment and find a pattern for prayer and Bible reading that works for you. For most people, it helps to have a regular time and place, a special chair or corner of a room, and to have ready access to your own copy of the Bible. Many people also find it helpful to have a set pattern of prayers that are themselves based on Scripture. One term for this pattern of prayer is a daily office, which of course is exactly what we're doing this evening together. Office, in this sense, means not a room with a desk and a computer, but an offering of our prayer and praise to God. Morning or evening prayer for Anglicans is a way of praying the scriptures through reading the Psalms each day and a short passage from the Old and the New Testaments. This kind of pattern offers a regular, balanced diet from the scriptures. In short, it is good to read and reflect on the Bible regularly in a balanced way, and to do this in the context of daily prayer. Remember the third question in the Anglican Catechism? Uh, I don't blame you <laughs> if you can't. And it's from the English prayer book too, I'm sure. And the question is, how should we read the Bible? The answer is we should read the Bible with the desire and prayer that through it God will speak to us by his Holy Spirit and enable us to know him and do his will. Whenever you read the Bible or hear it read as the church gathers together, pray that God will speak to you and to the whole community through the scriptures. The prayer that Eli taught Samuel is a good one to learn by heart and to use regularly. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Listening is rarely easy. According to 1 Kings 19.12, God speaks gently and softly. His word came to Elijah the prophet, not through an earthquake, wind, or fire, but through a still, small voice, or the sound of sheer silence. In Psalm 46, we are told, Be still and know that I am God. This means taking time with the text to read it carefully, and normally several times, as we have done throughout Pilgrim. It may mean looking up any difficult or unfamiliar words. It will mean pondering carefully words and phrases that strike us discerning in each passage and each verse what fresh insight God 
has for us today. It may mean learning short phrases or verses by heart so we can return to them again and again as we have need. What we draw from the scriptures will vary day by day and year by year. Often we may be drawn deeper into an encounter with God. Sometimes we will receive new insight into ourselves and our own lives. There will be moments of deep encouragement and occasionally challenge. Our minds may be changed. Sometimes there will be questions that we need to take to a friend who can help us. Finally, listen in the Bible always. Rather, finally, to listen in the Bible always carries the meaning of to obey, to be like the second house builder, the one who listens to the words of Jesus and goes away and puts them into practice, attending to the scriptures day by day means allowing them to shape our words, our actions, and our lives. In short, listening to God through the scriptures is, is demanding, dynamic, and life-giving. Let us pray. In a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers before Almighty God. And Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. And we pray together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this night and forevermore. Amen. Well, once again, thank you for worshiping the Lord uh, this evening with me. God bless. <laughs>